There is a gap in our transportation picture. Jet age travelers cross the country in four and a half hours and then get bogged down in slow surface travel between the airport and their destinations. City streets and jammed highways add hours to a trip, often wiping out the time saved by jet travel. Not to mention the wear and tear on the nerves. And the problem will get worse, much worse. The population of the United States, now 180 million, will soar to 330 million by the year 2000. Automobile production, now 7 million a year, will rise to 27 million. Cities will merge to form great urban complexes. In our own lifetime, such a complex will probably extend from Portland, Maine to Richmond, Virginia and from Los Angeles to San Diego with similar growth in other metropolitan areas. Several answers to the problem have been suggested. One is more freeways. Others include toll highways and rapid transit systems. But all are expensive and all are subsidized by the taxpayer and none is flexible enough to meet the unpredictable population movements. The solution, as it has been in the long-range travel, is to go up and over the crowded conditions below. To take the shortest distance between two points. To use the broad highway in the sky. The job will require a vertical lift machine, one able to fly directly between airport, midtown, and suburban communities. The helicopter is that machine. Flying under the regular air lanes and over surface traffic, Scheduled helicopter airlines in Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, and San Francisco, as well as in Europe, have brought a new dimension to transportation. At a heliport in the sprawling Los Angeles area, two vacationers prepare to board a helicopter that will take them to the airport, 70 miles away. A copter, a new turbine-powered craft, arrives and the passengers are off for a pleasant, traffic-free ride, and at a cost far less than taxicab fare. At the airport, their baggage already checked through by the helicopter airline, the travelers are sped by bus to their waiting jetliner. Next stop, Honolulu and the sands of Waikiki Beach. At Chicago's Midway Airport, eminent Dr. Charles Mayo and Mrs. Mayo take off on an 11-minute helicopter flight to O'Hare Field. By taxi, the trip takes as long as an hour or more. At O'Hare, the Mayos are driven right to the jetliner. Their destination, South America. On the continent, the helicopter has gone international, speeding passengers between Paris and Brussels and other European cities. Here, the helicopter flying from the heart of one city to the heart of another enables passengers actually to outspeed the faster fixed-wing airliners as far as elapsed time is concerned. In Brussels, for example, only a three-minute cab ride separates the heliport from the city's largest hotel. Airmail all the way is a reality thanks to the helicopter. Airmail posted the night before in New York reaches this heliport on top of the Los Angeles Post Office Annex as early as 4.30 the following morning ready for the day's delivery. With the city mail delivered, the copter takes off for mail deliveries to the suburbs. Meanwhile, other helicopters are completing their appointed rounds, delivering and picking up mail and express 
cutting hours and even days from surface delivery schedules. At each suburban helistop, agents, often housewives, meet the helicopters to handle the loading and unloading of cargo and passengers. Airmail from jet port to jet port to heliport. Airmail all the way, except for the final few miles to the mailbox. From Los Angeles Airport to Disneyland is a popular helicopter flight these days with goggle-eyed, small fry among its passengers, a turbine-powered Sikorsky S-62 swings low around the famed amusement center. The helicopter alights at the adjacent Anaheim Disneyland heliport and discharges its eager passengers for a day of fun. The return flight carries local businessmen who will make jetliner connections at the airport. The flight takes only about 20 minutes, compared with one to two hours by cab and much longer by bus and limousine. Helicopter airlines are efficient, fast-moving enterprises. At reservation centers, latest equipment is used to coordinate bookings made by airlines and travel agencies all over the world. Ticket counters are strategically located at the major airports for travelers wishing to avoid slow surface transportation. On the ground, a two-minute turnaround is the goal at this Chicago terminal, where helicopters earn their keep only while in the air. Helicopter service starts early and ends late, with schedules running well into the dark of night, as here in the Chicago area. A dividend to the community is the fact that the helicopters are always available for civil defense or other emergencies. Centrally situated loading areas such as this one at San Francisco International Airport add to the speed and convenience provided by the helicopter airlines. Careful maintenance is a must with these helicopter airlines and receives top priority. The world's scheduled helicopter airlines now carry more than half a million passengers each year and an ever-increasing quantity of mail and cargo. This progress has been made with relatively small aircraft powered by single piston-type engines. Now on hand are the lightweight, high-power gas turbine engines, such as this General Electric T-58, ideal for the helicopter. As a result, the helicopter airlines are now moving ahead with multi-engined aircraft carrying 25 or more passengers, or vastly increased cargo loads. These new aircraft, such as this Sikorsky S61L, mean dramatic reductions in operating costs down to about eight cents per seat mile, and bringing closer the day of subsidy-free operation. For the passengers, these new copter liners mean smoother, quieter, faster, and more reliable service. In cabins, outfitted like those of the big jet liners. With advent of the larger aircraft, the helicopter airlines are thinking in terms of expansion, 
particularly in extending their services to cover more and more of the outlying suburban communities. What of the long-range future? Education is one answer. Appreciation by city and regional planners that centrally located modern heliports must be provided. Heliports such as this one on the San Francisco waterfront. Or this one in downtown Oakland. Required also are government understanding and assistance of the type that has been provided for rail, water, truck, and air transportation. The helicopter, already a proven means of closing the jet age transport gap, needs only this public understanding and support to fulfill its promise for the future. The benefactors of such progress, the world's economy, and the millions who make up the world's great traveling public.